Welcome to our second in the series of uh, Holy Week devotions. Today we want to consider the King's Spring Cleaning from Luke chapter 19 verses 45 through 48. Spring cleaning is a tradition in many homes. I certainly remember my experience with it growing up uh, as a little boy. Uh, usually around this time of year the curtains and drapes would all come down. They'd be washed and fluffed. The furniture would be pulled away from the wall and things cleaned out behind it and under it. Closets would be emptied, clothes sorted, kitchen drawers, cupboards, everything would be opened and cleaned. Windows, floors, walls would all be washed. Everything would be cleaned each spring. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, cleansed the temple twice. The first time is recorded for us in John chapter 2. And it was not too long after his first miracle there in the city of Cana. Jesus made a whip and he drove out the animals and those who were selling them from the main courtyard in the temple. He overthrew the money changers tables and he drove all the money changers out. He pronounced a judgment upon the whole lot and particularly the Sadducees who were in charge of things at the temple. Jesus exposed the fact that these religious leaders were misusing God's temple for their own selfish and greedy purposes. And as you can imagine, the Jewish leaders were incensed. Three years later, when we come to Luke chapter 19, we, Jesus is arriving for what will be his final Passover there in Jerusalem. And everything was back to normal. The animals and their sellers were all back in place. The money changers were there in full force. All the greed and all the avarice which were there before were there again. Once again, Jesus takes matters into his own hands and he cleans house. And once again, the religious leaders are furious. This time, Luke 19.47 tells us that they wanted to destroy Jesus. One thing had changed. The hatred of the religious leaders toward Jesus and his reforms had deepened over those three years to such an extent that now they were looking for ways to kill him. Beloved, when Jesus becomes the Lord of our lives, it often means there's going to be some radical change as he comes to inhabit his temple. Paul states in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and again in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that believers are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus expects that his temple should be cleansed, holy, suitable as his habitation. And that means that Jesus will do some spring cleaning in our lives from time to time as needed. Now, I'm thankful that Jesus knows my weaknesses, he knows my failures, and he doesn't clean house all at once. He works on us a little bit at a time, working in one area, working in one part of our lives, helping us to grow and to mature and to learn what it means to lead a holy life. But Jesus is relentless in his cleaning, and he will continue to work in us and to accomplish his good purpose until that day that we stand before him. Now here's where many people balk and refuse to obey Jesus the King. The benefits of salvation are attractive. I mean, who wouldn't want eternal life? But submission to Jesus and the change that he initiates sometimes is looked upon as too big a price. Many experience a sense of conviction when they hear the claims of the gospel, but instead of exercising faith and obedience, they rebel and they seek ways to silence King Jesus. Beloved, I pray that that is never to be true of us. When Jesus comes to do a little spring cleaning in our lives, I pray that we may welcome the King whenever he comes. And whatever it is that he needs to clean in our hearts and minds, I pray that we'll open our hearts and minds and allow him to do his work. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that Jesus 
works in our lives to make us clean vessels that he can use, that can bring glory to him, that demonstrate to the world the love and the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Father, these kinds of changes are never easy, but they're always important. They're always beneficial. And so, Lord, as you work in our lives each and every day, helping us to conform to your image, I pray, Father, that we would work in cooperation with your Spirit and allow him to do that work of cleaning in our lives. May we have a life that brings honor and glory to our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray it in his name. Amen.